all this and I forgot to turn the camera on. Super secret. Yeah, I know. All right, let's take a look at this thing. This is from Angry Meow. This is about, I have all the stats for this. It's about 498 for the special or for the standard. And then for the um, special edition, it's 550. I believe there's an early bird special for this or something. There's also two standard base kit or for the, this is for the bundle. For the base kit, it's 400 and for the base kit special, it's 450. All right, let's take a look at this. They sent me, actually, I really like this two-tone kind of like side profile they got going on here. It's kind of nice. All right. This thing pretty much comes pre-assembled. I, I, again, I've already taken a look at this and there's a bunch of other accessories underneath here too. So some extra packaging stuff, I believe in some extra foam, stuff like that. Um, lots of different things inside this thing, like, like like copper leaf spring mounts, like different things inside here. The main thing is this keyboard here and this little touch pad they have in the front, which kind of looks neat. No, there's no building this. Like that's the thing about the stream. It's not gonna be like terribly long. So again, this looks pretty darn cool in my opinion. Yeah, it has like a touch pad or whatever you want to call it here in the front, which I haven't removed any of the stickers because I was waiting for you guys. Even on the back, it has the charging thing here on the bottom too. So nice. The keyboard itself looks pretty nice. This is the most impressive part about this keyboard, by the way. Like, I think I can sit here and talk about features, but the most impressive part about this, yes, it looks great. This is the most impressive part. And again, these are supposed to be touch pads. Now, Thing is, I've already made sure like this works on the PC. I have not done it on the Mac. So that's the, the only thing I have not done. Uh, sounds pretty good. It does, it does sound pretty good. A lot of extra stuff too. I actually haven't opened up this guy. Uh, lots of extra things inside here too, but pretty crazy. Mac experiment, let's go. I'd be curious to see if it pairs to the Mac. Not that I, I don't know how many people would actually use it. There's extra leaf springs in here too, which is pretty crazy. So the internals of this is pretty neat. We can take we can take a look at the in internals if we want. A little cool little torque screwdriver as well. Uh, what am I streaming from? I am streaming from an Apple computer actually. I swapped everything to Apple recently. I still have my Windows computer, but um, I did swap everything just because I was kind of low key getting sick of Windows. Windows is just not my cup of tea, but it's it's pretty nice. Like genuinely it is. Again, the typing experience in this is pretty cool too. Okay, let me let this charge a little bit for the stream. Actually, we can just use a plug in too. Actually, that's a great way to test this, but it's pretty nice. Okay, it actually does function. Does this work? It does work. Oh, so these are like arrow keys down here, by the way, guys. Oh, this is pretty nice on the Mac. It didn't work that well on the Windows computer for some weird reason. Wow, that's actually really cool. Not a fan of the transparent RGB. I mean, you can always replace the keycaps. The keycaps come with it. So this little touch thing over here, guys, you can use for arrow keys, which is pretty neat. Now I can't install the software. That I already know. The software does not seem to want to install on Mac, unfortunately, but um, you can do it on Windows. Actually pretty neat. So arrow key touch panel, which is actually pretty cool. Um, and I think you can also change it to do other things too. Like if you th through swipe and hold, you can change it to like, turn, like speed up a video and whatnot too. Um, some other things too is it is hot swap. So if you guys did want to hot swap this, some things that I, okay. Some things that I don't necessarily like about this, but it doesn't really matter because I don't think it's truly affecting much is it is using a 1.2 mil PCB and the PCB does have a lot of cutouts. Uh, I've already taken apart this once off stream, but it does have a lot of cutouts in it. Again, this doesn't really matter because this is not loaded with foam per se, but there is a, enough foam in here for it to not matter and you won't hear it too much. Again, it doesn't actually sound too bad. Um, the tuning on this right out of the box was like pretty insane, I'm not gonna lie. The only thing I might touch up is, uh, what's it called, the spacebar stabs ever so slightly, but genuinely like pretty nice. 
So they did also do smaller cutouts, which I know they've mentioned too. But yeah, genuinely pretty cool. Um, the case itself is inspired by Back to the Future, which they mentioned this beforehand and I was kind of a little bit confused. I personally don't see it, but they say it is. It's inspired by the DeLorean. I don't know if it is. Show you guys the side profile again. Does this look inspired by Back to the Future? I don't know. I, I, I guess the door, maybe, kinda. I don't think so. It just looks like a standard wedge side profile. I like the accented toe over here or whatever, but yeah, to me, it's a little bit of a stretch. I don't really think it's too much like in, you know, that, but it is nice. I think the touch panel is the coolest portion of this entire keyboard. It's definitely unique. Like I would love to see this on more keyboards, this cool touch panel, super, super cool. It does have a little bit of internals that you can swap out as well to give it a bit of a different feel. But this feature alone is super neat. Actually, I need to rebind all the keys for Mac because I, I, I've been waiting to use this. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I have actually been really waiting to use this for this computer. Um, I just haven't been able to because there was an embargo on it, so. But pretty cool. There's no real big criticisms past that. Can you program one press and hold on the uh, touchpad? I don't know how much you can program for that. Again, I haven't experimented too much with the uh, firmware or with the uh, software for it, but I think the default stuff, let me look at that again on there. Uh, so it'd be arrow keys without lifting your wrist or moving your forearm, which is kind of cool too. I actually really do like that. And then four op operable directions. So you can do up, down, left, right. And then as well as you can program it to swipe and hold which is pretty cool. So you can also do it to turn up volume, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it works without anything right now. Like you don't need any software to turn this on. It's really just to change things. You don't need anything to actually turn this on though. I have nothing already plugged into the, uh, the Mac, but pretty cool. And then let's actually see if I can pair this in the Mac, which is the pairing mode again. Let us see, cause I have actually no idea. How on earth do you pair things to this again? Oh, here it is. Oh yeah, here we go, nearby devices. Boom, we're paired. So now I can just type in, hi. Pretty cool. It's not plugged in or anything, so it's pretty neat. Hello chat. There's a cleaning cloth that comes with this too, as well as some extra bottom foam. Well, not really foam, it's more just like a piece of silicone that you can put on the bottom here. Kind of a foam. I just wanna say a few more things about this board too, because the more I look at this, I'm seeing this on my screen, the more I think this is actually a pretty nice looking board. How do you turn off the f***ing LEDs? Hold on, let me turn off the LEDs. I don't like the LEDs being on. LED effect, function plus this guy. Okay, well that does that. The board actually looks really cool. I think I would swap the keycaps. I, I just really, I really like the overall aesthetic of this. I really like the implementation of the touchpad. I think they did an amazing job. Um, I was also, and I still am like a fan of Andrew Meow's other products. I haven't tried their, I don't remember what it was called, but the split ergo one, but I have used their other keyboard and I, I genuinely really liked it. This is no comparison. The quality of this is like also very good. It's Andrew Meow to me. AM65 looks amazing. The Hatsu, that's what it was called. I, I really like the fact that the arrow keys are down here on this swipe touchpad. I think that's so fucking dope. Uh, the AM65, yeah. Yeah, by themselves with the RGB, I think the keycaps are fantastic. I don't think it's bad. I didn't touch anything about this, by the way. This is all stock. Listen to this. Stabs are perfectly tuned. I also, like I said, I also really like the aesthetic of the keyboard too. There's no real bad things about this out of the box. If you're not into HHKB, then maybe this isn't for you. 
I wouldn't say this is like a true HH key B because I know someone's gonna bite my ass, but I don't say that like it doesn't have that other longer side here or whatever, but it still is a really nice layout. I think it's only the HHKB as far as I know, because th this is done with the um, touchpad. So it's kind of done with that in mind. Here's a look at the switches that they have inside. That's their take on one. Again, this uses like a leaf spring mount on the inside. So it is quite soft. Very sexy keyboard though. Very, very sexy keyboard. But there's gonna be seven colors of this, as far as I know. Uh, I can let you guys know the names of everything, which is gonna be uh, Night Drive, which is gonna be like a purple one, All Black, which is what I have, Hard Candy, which if you guys have Noel, Noel would go perfect with that, 8-Bit, which is kind of like a beige and burgundy, uh, then they also have a laser one with some extra LEDs, which it's fine LEDs, and then they also have a Mech Love one, which also has some extra LEDs in the blockers, which is more LEDs, so totally up to you guys. Um, but yeah, this is the reasoning why they don't have the split backspace, by the way. It's actually in their Q&A thing, which I'm going through right now. Uh, by keeping the TU backspace, we were able to integrate hot swap, in-switch RGB, and cutouts for additional flex. So it seems like it was a deliberate decision made to keep some of the typing feel to the keyboard. Does that bother me? Absolutely not. But maybe it bothers someone else. Okay, so you can actually change things on left. Okay, so it does work with the the Apple stuff too. Okay, cool. Now I can finally keep this on my desk. I'm gonna move this on it for today. And I think I'm gonna use this for the rest of the night. Like I said, I've been itching to actually use this thing. I just haven't had the opportunity to, so excited to finally have the opportunity to use it. Peace out everyone, bye, and thanks for coming. I appreciate you guys.